Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Test Flight in the UH-1 Huey. And this time, I'm going to finally figure out the communications piece of it and get that squared away and get into the air and do some basic navigation. So let's go ahead and jump into the cockpit and see where it takes us. Okay, folks, I'm back and I have it all figured out now. My apologies if you're sitting there watching me and just screaming at me with the answer, but I come around here and I previously mapped this trigger switch to... Uh, control my communications. Now, what I apparently missed was that if I go into the settings for that switch, and I'm going to go to the cyclic setting, it's got one, okay, first detent is the ICS, second detent is radio. So I was only going to the first detent and not going to the second detent to actually do the radio. In other words, I was just talking over the intercom. So what I need to do, okay, I'm on Position 3 for my VHF AM. I'm going to go all the way down to the second D10. I've already done some communications, so I'll just request takeoff as just as a demonstration here. Okay, and I get a response, and I'll try to increase the volume on that a little bit. I think that'll be a little bit better now. Okay, so that's the mystery of the non-functional tower communications. Now, let me try my wingman. I'm up on 255, and parent menu, flight, rejoin. Okay, again, I think I just am on the wrong frequency. Let me go 251. Flight, rejoin. That's frustrating. That's, it's got to be just the wrong frequency. Okay, let me try VHF 30. I've got a JTAC out there, so let me go to position 1. VHF FM. Nothing. I don't think I'm going to get the JTAC until I'm in the air, so... I'll take that as a good initial setup on my communications. Now let me think about navigation. And get this up and running. So let me go back to my maps with the... NDB frequencies. Okay, I know I have a marker beacon out, beacon out there, inner and outer marker, 489 and 7, and a 489 and 998. Let me just try to got to get the NDB set up on 489, the outer marker. So going down to ADF. Okay, 489. So I want the. Okay, I want the 400 to 800 position. I'm going to go on. I'm going to try to adjust this. Okay, two. I was looking for four, eight, nine. I had something come up a little bit lower. Okay, four, eight, nine. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so I've got signal strength right there. That's four, eight, nine. I've got a good tone coming through. And I'm expecting. Where would I expect this to be? I am. On the runway, okay, I would expect this to be out to my left, then. Okay, so it is pointing left. Okay, that's exactly where I would expect that NDB to be. I'm not going to get range off of this. I don't know if I'm actually going to get range off of anything. I don't have a tack in. I don't know if I'm going to get... Oh, I, I stand corrected. I might get a range once I have something dialed in on my other indicator here. Okay, at least I've got the uh, NDB and ADF thing figured out. Now this little guy, that's what I'm going to be navigating off of once I get airborne, so I can't really read the the frequency, but okay, that's going to be 525. Okay, so we come back around and Okay, 525. Yeah, I've got a good pointer, and that's exactly... Okay, it settles down up there at about 3... Uh, 3, 2, 5. Okay, so is that what I would expect? Okay. Okay, 3, t three 2, 5 being the... Well, that's not right at all, is it? Okay, I'm hitting... Where am I pointing? <laughs> exactly. I am pointing 
Okay, out over the, the ocean. The sea, I should say. Should this not be... I'm just misinterpreting what this is telling me. It's, po it's saying that it's off of my nose to the left. And that if I wanted to guide on it directly, I would need to turn left. So turn left. That's telling me what I would expect. I've just got to figure out... Yeah, I've got to... Okay, I've got to get the compass synced sync up. So what I want to do is sync this up to the direction I am facing. And this is going to take a little bit of a thought because it's not as simple as... So I'm facing on a heading myself of 175-ish, if I had to guess. There's got to be a better way to figure that out. So if I bring this around to 175 and sync it up with, the, with my current heading, now that makes a lot more sense. So the direction to this is a little bit south of east, which is exactly right. So it's still showing me a left-hand turn. Southeast is now the correct direction to that. So yeah, I think that's the key is, okay, when I'm on the ground, I'm going to know my current direction, set this up and calibrate it beforehand. There's got to be a better way to do that because I know that I need uh, Let's see, magnetic heading. I'm going to get this for magnetic heading. So it's showing me 15, 16, I think that's ultimately going to be the way to do it. There's, got, there's still got to be a better way, though. I'll put some more thought into that, but that's going to get me at least in the right ballpark. Okay, and now, on this little guy. I'll be using this one for ILS and also for VOR navigation. If I have any VORs, I know I do have a station out there. Uh, not at not at Tsukimi, but at that other airfield. Go back here. Okay, here we go. So I've got 113.6 out here at this other airfield. But for now, that's going to be 108.09 on my initial setup for this gauge, which I am going to take is controlled by my nav comm. So let me get this on. Let me tune that to 108.9. Okay, 108.9. I think I'm at too far a range to really get anything. Although, no, I am hearing the... I am getting the tone off of that. Okay, so let me just kind of turn the tone down a little bit. Okay, 108.9. So that's going to help me out when it comes to steering on that ILS. I'll turn that back off for now. Okay, so for now, I've got everything that I need, I believe, to navigate. I've got, I've got maps for visual navigation, especially this one. This is what I'm going to use from here on out for visual navigation, I can already tell. And, okay, so I'm just going to take off, fly out to the east, guiding on the NDB right here at wherever this town is. Okay, so, yeah, southeast along the road, I'll have an NDB out there to give me a uh, backup on my direction. And then, setting up for a visual approach... I'll also do some ILS out here at Tsukimi, and then I come around and try out the VOR down here at Semtredia, whatever the airfield is um, actually called down there. Alright, so I've already got clear for takeoff, and let me go ahead and get my transponder on. I'll, go, I'll just go to standby right, for nothing else, just to get rid of the caution. Reset some of Master Cautions out. I believe for now I am ready to do some flying. Okay, let me go ahead and get my radar altimeter up and running. So I'll go radar altimeter on and get this set up to give me some indications. I'm going to set my low altitude warning for... Oh, what are these tick marks set to, I think? 10 feet of tick, maybe? So I'll set my low... I'll get a low altitude warning, I think, at 50 feet. And I'll set it up so that I get a high altitude warning at 1,000 feet, I guess. And it's not really a warning, I just get a low altitude light that comes on.
whip put to test. Okay, yeah, there we go. Low altitude, yeah, low altitude comes on when I'm below this tick. High altitude, I bet, comes on when I'm above that tick. Let me set that back down. Okay, let me right click to test, or left click to test again. Yeah, high altitude on when I pass that tick. Off, on when I'm below that tick. And yeah, that was set up for 50 feet, which is good enough. That's what I want. All right, so that's the basic setup. And again, what I always do with this is I know just enough to get me started, but after doing this and using the system, I'll go back to the manual, and I guarantee I'm going to pick up on a lot of stuff that I've just missed or misinterpreted or misunderstood. Okay, so I'm already cleared for takeoff. So what I want to do is go ahead and... Uh, get into the air and taxi out to the end of the runway and take off. So let's we'll see here. Okay, double checking again. I've got everything set up. I've got uh, good engine RPMs, good rotor RPMs. So let me go ahead and assume the position, so to speak. Um, rudder slightly left, back and aft on my stick. A zoom set up for. Okay, I think that's a good, comfortable spot. Okay, so just uh, gently back on the collective. Airborne, I was a little bit too far back on the stick and didn't correct enough with the rudder. Okay, so sitting up in a hover, I'm just going to stabilize out here and get things going. Let's go ahead and taxi out to the end. I'll come back around here to the right. Okay, clear to the right. And the visual reference I've got to get used to is also that I keep kind of looking over to the left thinking that's the front of the aircraft, whereas I've got to remember that I'm offset to the right in the aircraft and that I just need to, to look straight ahead, just down this line instead of over there. So this is my, this is the reference that I need to be using, is just straight ahead. Boy, that's going to take a lot of getting used to. Okay, and I'll just... Uh, Getting a little bit too fast in my taxi. Increase my pitch to reduce the airspeed. Okay, and just kind of kind of cruising along using the ground effect here to to keep me in the air. I'm not doing anything with the collective as I go. I'm just kind of steady at about four feet and using my cyclic to control my speed and just kind of keep a track down the center using combination of cyclic and pedal. And folks, that's going to do it for this edition of Test Flight in the UA-20 Huey. So I'll be back next time and get it airborne and do some more navigation and some more basic flight. So I hope you are enjoying the series and I'll see you next time.